Hello, folks, and welcome to uh, the uh, Greatest Little Cowboy Gathering. This is our uh, third demo to, uh, this weekend, and uh, I'm here with Jeff Hood, my good friend out of Dallas, and he's one of the best uh, bread bakers that I know in a Dutch oven. So I asked him to come help, and uh, we've been having, I've been having a pretty good time today. How about yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, it's been a good fun. So I'm Tim Spice. I actually live here in Fayette County, and I've been cooking with Dutch ovens for about 30 years. So. <clears throat> Uh, been, it's been a lot of fun. We're, we're here to talk about Dutch oven, show you some recipes, and hope that you take it back home and have fun with yourself. Uh, what we've got in front of us here is our standard size Dutch ovens. And you can start with a 12 on top. It's still hot because we've been cooking all day. Um, 12, the number on top of the Dutch oven is the diameter of the Dutch oven. And this is a 12 inch standard height Dutch oven. This would, be the this would be the one that you might have at home, or it's a, a suggestion that you buy for your first Dutch oven. Right below it, we've got a 12 inch deep. Now the difference between the two you can see is air space. So I like to bake in these, because there's less air space and I can get a good brown top. And I like, you can make a big old stew in this one. So a 12 and a 12 deep. You can see that uh, they have legs underneath them. They have a rim on top to hold the coals on. Why do they have legs underneath? Does anybody know? Get air underneath there. Right? Why do you need air underneath? It makes the fire hot. To have fire, you need three things, right? You didn't know you are going to have a science lesson today, did you? What are the three things you need for a fire? Air. Air, fuel, and heat. So if you had a Dutch oven that your grandmother may have had that has no legs and you put it on top of the fire, it would go out. So that's why we've got legs. And then the lip will keep the ashes from going inside the Dutch oven. Now we've got a 14 and a 14 inch deep. These are my favorite size because I can cook for about 25 folks inside these. I like the 14 inch more than the 16. <clears throat> this is the mumbo jumbo here. You can cook for about 35 or 40 people. Big old Dutch oven. But it weighs a ton. It's very heavy. So, but I've had this where I've had about 12 Cornish game hens in there and we're able to cook that. It's a good meal. So these are the sizes you're gonna see and Lodge is, is a Dutch oven you'll see a lot of. Jeff and I use these to cook everything. Everything in the world. These are seasoned very well, some older than others. So you see the good black on there? It's called a patina. So the smoother it is, the better the patina. You know what is a, what's a patina? What is this? What, what is that? Carbon. So these are microcarbon layers of buildup. Now think about that for a second. Every time you cook in it, you leave a microcarbon a layer. So, whatever we eat out there today, we're eating what we put in there the first time we used it. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Oh, anyway, I had these in storage all last year, and when I took them out to reseason them, I could smell what I cooked in them the year before. It was that. It was quite interesting. So, how do we clean these? How do you clean your Dutch oven? Oh no, never soap. <laughs> Why don't you ever use soap? No rusting. No. Take the seasoning off of it. No. I'm not guessing anymore. <laughs> it adds soap taste because the carbon layers are porous. So the soap molecules will soak into the layers of carbon and then it'll take multiple use before you get rid of the soap taste in your food. So we use warm water. If it's, if it's really dirty, we'll use a scratch brush. And then we'll re-season it with a light coating of oil and putting it over heat until the oil is smooth. The other thing that Jeff and I have, we both have, there's different manufacturers to make tables. This makes it a little easier for those, us old guys as we get older so we don't have to bend down or us tall guys to the ground. We can raise it off the ground. These are two, separate, two different manufacturers. And then this is a windscreen. We would have had a real tough time today trying to cook for folks if we hadn't had the windscreen. And then we've got a lid lifter. This is our favorite. It's got a long handle so you don't have to bend over. And I can control where I put the lid, which will keep less dirt and ash getting into the, 
into the Dutch oven. This is a standard lift litter, lid lifter <laughs> Woo! that you might get uh, at Academy. And you can see the difference. When I get down to lift it, that lid is uh, moving around. I got to get it at an angle before I can control it. By the time I get to that angle, I've lost some ash in the, in the meal. I prefer this lid lifter. I can lock in. I can hook and walk at arm's length. Now, Jeff and I both do the same thing when we store our Dutch ovens. We have a little bit of paper towel in there, and it's used to absorb moisture. And I usually wick mine. I'll put it on the edge, and then that's how I'll store my Dutch ovens till I use them. Because it's not like the old Pioneer days where you had one pot and you used it every day. So we got to store them and take care of them. Do you season them with, with the oil? Very light coating of oil. Very light. You know you put too much oil on there if you go back to it and you touch it and it's sticky. When I'm using them a lot, I use an olive oil. Other than that, just a regular vegetable oil. I like to bake in the shallow ones okay. because I can get a better brown top. Okay. I, I have to watch the heat. Right. And we'll talk about temperature control in a little bit. For the deep ones, I can get more volume. So I'll do a stew or a soup or a chicken. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. Jeff's going to show us some sourdough and a dump cobbler. And then we'll come back and see what the chicken we've been cooking all morning looks like.